Hello all, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, technical agnostic and Fortean skeptic. Um, I liked the initial um, talk of what they were saying about, you know, uh, back to reason-based schools and teaching kids how to think overall. But in the process of talking about that, I noticed a couple of slippery slope arguments used twice and a couple of people contradicting themselves uh, in both major areas. Um, one of which was our uh, expert over here, who is the head of the uh, resource board for, for, for the Toronto uh, School Board, was saying that 40% uh, said that we needed to look at the statistic, the actual statistic, saying that 40% of black men were not graduating high school as opposed to black women and uh, looking at this issue and looking at the actual statistics around it. And then when they were talking about how down in the United States this uh, model was actually helping um, African uh, kids come back out with better marks, they said, well, statistics are problematic. You need to look at the stories behind the statistic, not so much the statistic. Well, I'm going, okay, where is the statistic, where is the, what is the story behind the statistic of the 40% graduation rate? So far, at least in this part one, it's been all talked about, and then they flip to another issue, and they don't really get a chance to actually explain that. So there's a contradiction there. I also noticed two slippery slope arguments in that. One of which was that, oh, it's all going to be racist and we're going to end up, you know, uh, one school is going to be demanding more funding than the other school and we're going to end up in some sort of racial war turning into the Balkans. A little bit of an exaggeration on hyperbole, don't you think? That does turn into a slippery slope argument. And uh, the, the head of the resource, um, that was what the, Freedom, uh, the head of the Freedom Party of Ontario said, and the head of the uh, resource board was even, saying, uh, was even saying something along the lines of a, uh, uh, you know, like it's a slippery slope argument because so uh, we could slip. And what about Italian schools, like Italian-centric schools or all this sort of thing? I hate to say it, but they're twisting the issue a little bit here. Um, now, I'm not exactly a proponent for segregation or of separating people into other schools myself. But on the other hand, I do want people to consider this. I speak from uh, the perspective of having a disability. And... Um, now, I speak from British Columbia, which may be a little bit different, but I used to grow up in Toronto. And, um, you know, I hate to say it, but the thing is that uh, there were segregated classes back in my school. And, yes, we did get um, a, a drop in resources, but bear this in mind. Bear, uh, bear this in mind. I want, I, want to make, um, I want to make something perfectly clear. Um, I, for my first few years of elementary school, before I got the uh, lucky breaks I did, which just set me on a much better track, um, I I got stuck in a uh, in a in a elementary school which had one token disability class where all the kids with various disabilities were uh, were grouped together, and they were just left to rot basically. Um, now, mind you, this was at a time period when um, not much was known about disabilities, and we were also living in a bad neighborhood school. So there were two issues for funding, one of which was that it was not that we, you know, and, and this is what I understood, and I think my teacher understood this to a certain extent too, that we were trying to fight in a already very small pot of money uh, for, dis for disabilities. Um, we, you know, there were two reasons we were getting a uh, lack of disability, one, uh, lack of funding. One of which was that all the disabilities were grouped together so we couldn't get everything for individual disabilities. And the second of which was the fact that the pot for money for funding for our, the pot of funding for our school was already so small that they weren't going to even be able to get much out of it anyway. So the, um, you know, I mean, if people are concerned about, uh, you know, about these divvying up of, uh, of funds or what have you, you know, we already have a much larger problem happening here. Um, you know, people are saying, like, well, what about the, the black school getting more funding than the white school or what have you? Well, you know, I hate to say it, but um, that's a, um, you know, if you're, if you're going to work based on that basis, that, you know, that it's going to start turning into some major, uh, you know, racial problem or what have you, uh, then I disagree. For the one simple reason that this fight is already still going on in terms of, uh, well, you know, uh, lesser funded schools, both, um, for example. Uh, what about the stats of um, uh, percentages of schools that, uh, you know, the, the, the best, success, uh, the, the, the schools in the biggest, na in the most, in, in the richest neighborhoods? Something like, uh, if, remember, if memory serves, a, t a teacher's union, uh, um, a teacher's uh, study that came out in 2000 said that the... Um, uh, said that the rates uh, that some the top 10 percent of schools or something got the top 40 percent of the funding, or something like that. But you don't see us turning into some sort of giant war or something like that, where uh, where it's all class and uh, a communist type, uh, uh, you know, uh, base or what have you. And also, here's another one. People are wondering about funding for these different, uh, you know, or trying to teach kids what's best, or, or dis and they said disability is another matter and the like. Well, uh, but he said, and initially the head of the Freedom Party said, oh, well, we, we, don't, uh, we don't like tax-funded schools because it deprives the choice of parents. 
Well, what about the separate? Uh, what about uh, pr uh, defending against these separationist schools? Um, how are you supposed to be able? Uh, what is when it's talking about? How is that depriving choice from parents? Because the thing is, um, you know, how is that depriving choice from parents by giving them tax-based schools? Here's another thought. It may not necessarily be depriving parents. You're only forgetting about the fact that there are some parents who can afford to send students to other schools. There is an income bracket of people, and they're not like the lazy ones on welfare, as you point out. There are some people who can't even, you know, who are still working in low-end jobs because that's all they can find right now. Here in British Columbia, where we are now, again, I am applying slightly different standards, but I used to live in Toronto, and there were a large amount of parents who could not afford a basic job. So, you know, what about that? Um, you know, so what about that uh, that problem there? And. Um, now here's the other one, the slippery slope argument. Um, you know, so, so anyway, basically, uh, parents might have a difficulty being able to find kids to get some schooling at all anyway. And homeschooling, if the parents aren't particularly well educated, could be problematic for the kids anyway. Like that's the reason why we have a public school system in the first place is at least an attempt to make sure that um, uh, you know to make sure that this uh, needs to be dealt with. Now, improvements in the curriculum, I'm all for it. Now let me make something else perfectly clear. There are also some schools, both in Toronto and out here, which specifically um, filter off certain groups of the population in terms of uh, ability from the rest of the population. There are alternative structured schools. The curriculum's the same, but teaching style is alternative. Montessori schools, for example, are very effective in some cases. Um, down in the U.S. where this, uh, this segregation, ha uh, well, not really segregation, but where they've used this system, if these kids are actually being um, you know, given a much uh, larger resource pay base, much like in the richer schools, well, of course, you know, um, in some cases, well, that's part of the reason they argue for, you know, the uh, the the biggest ones uh, getting better funding is because they've already done it initially, and they say, well, look, we've already gotten this, and it's uh, you know, the, the the kids from rich areas are going to do better, so let's uh, you know take away the funding from the poor kids. Well, if you don't give them any funding, then as you pointed out by your own logic, they're not going to get, they're not going to feel like it's worth it, and they're going to drop out. Maybe this is a class issue. Ever thought of that? Um, you know. You know, maybe we need to reallocate the funding a bit better from taxpayers' money to the schools overall. And then, um, now, of course, for disabilities, the, and I want to make this perfectly clear, because, uh, having a disability myself, disabled students, um, depending on what their disabilities are, do actually need certain types of accommodations, such as readers or what have you, so this way their own brains can work at the same processing level and they can, uh, they can um, get tested on the material more effectively, you know, um, you know, um, you know that their their brains can process then on par with uh, fellow students, um, you know, of, of normal mental faculties. Asperger's, for example, we need extra time in order to quell anxiety attacks, uh, which, contrary to popular opinion, no, are not like uh, are not um, able to be controlled effectively by Aspies like an on-off switch. It is a neurochemical problem, and. Um, you know, time limits are just one of the things that set it off. By giving an extended time period, you give enough time for an ASPE to have a panic attack, work through it, and then still be able to do the work on the problem. You know, like that's the, you know, that is a, that is a neurochemical issue. Um, you know, there are a whole bunch for other, um, you know, uh, poor handwriting is another one. Uh, you know, uh, again, that's a motor skill coordination issue. That is something that is not able to be controlled in a lot of these cases. But you get, you get the idea. Now, in terms of reason-based uh, schools or what have you, um, like I said, so anyway, um, just by separating the schools uh, in terms of nationality or what have you may not necessarily um, cause this sort of division where it all becomes like the Balkans, especially if you're teaching them the same curriculum, but just giving them a focus of, uh, you know, but just giving them a focus of being able to teach, um, you know, being able to learn of, okay, by the way, um, you know, like if they're separating these people based on, okay, well, here's your teachers or what have you, or uh, if you're if you're trying to give them an area where they can focus by themselves without any distractions amongst racism. I mean, like if there's racism in the modern school system or what have you, then by separating them to a certain extent, you're not trying to give them racism, but you might say like, okay, look, you got screwed up with the rate uh, with the racism in the system. You might be able to uh, give them the focus and say, okay, now you need to focus on this, and what we'll do is we'll take you out of a situation where racism is going to play on your mind. So by taking that out as a factor and then teaching them, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily like, you know, like, oh, this is black history, this is white history, I do disagree with that. But if you do put them in an area or if you give them the skill uh, or the accommodations or what have you in the school to help uh, steer them towards the material and less away from the racist uh, perspective, and whether that requires adaptions in the local school system of, you know, of teaching styles to be able to handle this, or whether this requires a separation of schools, um, you know, if you can find a way of getting, getting accommodations so this way they feel accepted in the school system uh, while working, whichever way you do it, that is a good thing. 
So this way they can focus on the logical material and then learn the best way to work from there. More in the next video.